we've been taking a look at older trades that didn't happen, but almost happened. So let's take a little look at the past. Further than the time frame that I was a hockey fan, back into 2008, where the Vancouver Canucks almost made a trade for what was one of the better players in the NHL at the time. Now today, we're talking about the Vancouver Canucks and Brad Richards. Who exactly is Brad Richards? Well, I think the majority of my fan base probably knows who he is, probably knows about the context on how he became good, who exactly he was before he became good, but I know a lot of my viewers are indeed younger, and I do have a part of the fan base that is younger than I am, and I am turning 20 later this year. And I was a guy who got into the sport of hockey much later after this trade debacle happened. So now that I have your attention, let's just go over who exactly Brad Richards was, why he was so good, and why it was so important that the Vancouver Canucks were so close to acquiring him. Brad Richards was a guy that was drafted all the way back in 1998 in the third round, 64th overall by the Tampa Bay Lightning. In his draft year, he posted up 115 points in 68 games played for the Ramuski Oceanic in the QMJHL. Now that's a really good number, and nowadays somebody who posts up that kind of number would probably get drafted somewhere in the top 7 or the top 5 or whatever. The thing is, Richards was a guy who was playing on that Stack Ramuski Oceanic team with a guy named Vincent LeCavalier, who was also in his draft year, and who the Tampa Bay Lightning also took first overall in that draft. Let's go over to this post here on Reddit, talking about why Brad Richards was so underrated and why he was drafted so late. This is a comment over here from Nathan Guy that goes over everything. The first part is that the QMJHL's reputation at that time was still very much that of a league where one could find scoring forwards and goalies, but nothing else. 33 goals and 115 points is impressive, but not that impressive when you're talking about someone who is playing on a line with consensus franchise players. The perception of Richards at that time was that he was a slow and awkward skater, who put up a ton of superficial points because of who he was on the ice with. Unfortunately, power play stats are not readily available, but I'd have to imagine that a decent number of his points came from the man advantage with Le Cavalier and Walzer. That said, Richards did perform fairly well when Le Cavalier was at the World Juniors. As far as his pro chances looked, it's important to note that at the time, the NHL as a whole was scouting for either size or speed. Both together was terrific, but if a guy didn't have speed, he'd better have size. Richards at 6 foot 170 pounds had neither, and 1998 was the same year that Rico Fata was taken 6th overall, about whom I once heard a scout say, that boy could get to the wrong place on the ice faster than anyone in history. It's also worth mentioning that Phil Esposito, the GM of the Lightning, said that a few scouts from the other teams were laughing when they picked Richards in the third round. The problem with taking Esposito at face value is he made the dinner banquet circuit both during and after his career, where an entertaining or funny story is better than a completely factual one. It makes research a bit tough, but I had no doubt that no one thought Richards would be worth much. So we don't really know if other GMs were really laughing at the lightning for taking Richards, but the somewhat unreliable word of Phil Esposito does say that. So, Richards was a player who not too many people were super high on, but give it a few years in the QMJHL, give it a few years of development, and eventually he debuted with the Lightning and got 62 points in 82 games. Whoa. He eventually became one of the top scorers for the Lightning. His peak was a 91-point season in 2005-2006. He was great. He won a Stanley Cup with the Lightning, he was playing with Le Cavalier, and then in 2008, this is where the Lightning were bad. Jumping around time a little bit, 2008 is when the Lightning were last in the Eastern Conference, and they won the Steven Stamkos sweepstakes to draft him first overall. However, before that, during the trade deadline, 
Brad Richards was traded to the Dallas Stars, but that is not what we're focusing on here today. We are focusing on the Vancouver Canucks. Let's take a look at this article here from February 27 of 2008, written by Toby Ward. The Vancouver Canucks failed to land Brad Richards because they were able to trade over Mike Smith, a young goalie, Jeff Halpern, UC Jokinen, and a fourth round draft pick. However, the Vancouver Canucks also had their own trade proposal that the Tampa Bay Lightning just didn't think was as good as Dallas's. According to this article over here, this is what Vancouver GM Dave Nonis formally offered the Tampa Bay Lightning in exchange for Richards, Luke Bourdon, Corey Schneider, a first and a second round draft pick. Obviously, RIP to Luke Bourdon, it was a long time ago, but it still does hurt to take a look at the possibilities. Corey Schneider was a guy who, three years after this, became an absolute monster in the NHL, and a first and a second is something that could have gone either way. Most analysts said that Mike Smith was a better goalie than Corey Schneider, and that Tampa made a good choice. However, Tampa also passed on a heck of a defenseman in Luke Bourdon, and two hefty draft picks for a utility journeyman in Halpern, and UC Jokinen who was struggling to break the 20-goal barrier in the NHL. This article talks about how some people were kind of ticked off that the Lightning chose the Stars trade offer, but Devil's Advocate though, the other perspective is that at least they did not give up Bourdon, Schneider, and two draft picks for a Brad Richards who only had 18 goals at the time. Brad Richards, after getting traded to Dallas, matched his 91 point high in 2009-2010. Eventually, he kind of faded away, but he went out with a bang, making the Stanley Cup Finals two years in a row with the Rangers in 2014, and then winning the Cup with the Blackhawks in 2015. He's the guy who set up Patrick Kane on that crazy overtime goal against Los Angeles, and you know exactly the one I'm talking about where Kane goes down, he kneels, and he like starts fist pumping the air and stuff. But Richards had a very decorated NHL career, getting the Stanley Cup two times and being a legitimate scoring threat for a good majority of his career. But what if this guy was on the Vancouver Canucks? What if this guy was playing with the Prime Sedins in 2009-2010? He had 91 points for the Dallas Stars that year. Imagine if he was playing with Henrik and Daniel. Ooh, 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 ooh. Imagine if he was playing with Kessler. Imagine if he was on the top power play with Kessler, the Sedins, and Erhoff. That would have been crazy. And the Vancouver Canucks may have just have won a Stanley Cup. It's not like... And I say this with the utmost respect, it's not like Luke Bourdon contributed heavily to the Vancouver Canucks. And Corey Schneider in this time period was in the shadow of a Roberto Luongo. So to me, it's only really the draft picks here that are being dealt as legitimately useful pieces in this time frame. And let's face it, the Mike Gillis era of drafting, which was around this time afterwards, wasn't great. They didn't really get any good NHL caliber players with their draft picks. So to me, looking at it in retrospect, taking a look at how Bourdon unfortunately left the organization, I guess, we'll say it like that to be euphemistic, and how Schneider wasn't really coming into his own until after the cup run, there really wasn't anything the Canucks could have lost in the time frame of them making the finals if they successfully pulled off a Brad Richards trade. And it sucks now because taking a look at it, yeah, the potential of Bourdon, Schneider, those two picks probably outweighs the potential of a Mike Smith, a Jokinen, and what the Dallas Stars ended up offering. Who knows, if Bourdon gets traded, maybe the guy doesn't do what eventually happened. And of course, I want to pay all my respects to Luke Bordoni. It would have been amazing, but 
he was involved in this trade package, so we can't avoid talking about it. So comment down below what you think about this whole thing. Brad Richards is a guy who I wasn't really into hockey when he was amazing, so it was really interesting for me to take a look at this history lesson, take a look at the draft stock, how he was lowly touted despite having a lot of points, and then he became amazing, and then he was great, and then he was almost a Vancouver Canuck, and then he won the Stanley Cup after making the finals two times in a row. So, a decorated career for Brad Richards, of course, but comment down below what you think. I hope you enjoyed this video, especially that I 99. And, bye. <laughs>